Hello ladies and gentlemen, with a small search of people discovering my new channel I figured now would be a good time to make a video explaining some recent happenings that led me to making this new channel. At first I wanted to wait, but I decided to do this sooner rather than later since this channel will eventually attract the attention of my enemies, haters, and harassers anyway. I'm just gonna be short and to the point. Back in 2023, I went by the name of Zaid Magenta. I used to go by a different name, but I got rid of it because I came to realize how cringe it is. Not sure why I thought it was cool, but it is what it is. I have had something of a reputation, nothing big or large. I didn't have like over 100,000 subscribers or anything like that, but still. I have had something of a reputation of being critical of horrible movies, TV shows, and video games in ways that the Twitter crowd finds offensive as I am more objective and final in my analysis compared to most other reviewers. This drew the ire of people like this guy who thinks the internet should be an open-minded place where everyone is accepted and respected for their opinions and the media they like regardless of how wrong they are, while at the same time having fits of rage towards people who criticize disposable Hollywood garbage he happened to like such as Disney's Star Wars or Rings of Power. I'm not really sure how I managed to draw in their attention because I never really wanted to. I mean sure, a couple of my videos managed to break over 100,000 views, but I never expected that to happen. Like, I never thought my re-review of The Last Jedi was gonna get almost a million views. That was completely by accident. I just wanted to do a video updating my critiques on it since the sequel trilogy ended. My videos, as well as my old Twitter account, attracted the ire of people who don't like being told that something is objectively bad or how they're stupid for having horrible opinions. So they felt the need to make me some sort of supervillain in their online communities. This of course led to all sorts of targeted harassment from potential potentially tens of thousands of people. From false accusations of me being racist for criticizing the industry's actually racist practice of blackwashing white characters, to lies about me being some sort of sexist for criticizing badly written characters that just happen to be strong independent women, to lies about me being a far right-wing Trump supporter for talking about that one time Modern Simpsons tried shoving anti-Trump garbage down our throats, to, and I swear I'm not kidding here, comparing me to that guy who killed millions of people because they didn't fit his vision of a perfect German empire, over gatekeeping the Simpsons for from the retards who think the show's corpse being milked for the last 25 years isn't a bad thing, to man-children trying to paint me as one of the worst people currently on the internet for saying Space Jam 2 is a bad movie, the honestly let's just move on to the next part because if I list out all of them we're gonna be here for the rest of the year. These people would relentlessly and viciously attack me in some shape or form because they were personally offended by something I said about I don't know, one of the disposable pieces of Hollywood trash currently listed on screen, wanting to ruin my image as a YouTube reviewer out of spite. And you might say, oh, get over it, stop caring about what other people think of you. But that's really hard to do when it gets to the point of them sending you 15 minute long messages telling you to... Let's just call it that thing that happens to James in one of the Silent Hill 2 endings. Dealing with these people every time I criticized something was causing me a lot of stress, and that stress eventually evolved into anger. I decided that I'm no longer going to tolerate the vile nonsense these people are doing to me because I didn't validate their feelings on some corporate product made by privileged Hollywood scum. I was putting together plans for a video talking about these people, but somewhere along the way I ended up going rogue, which led to me making a lot of horrible decisions. The thing about my anger is that it reached a boiling point that I was just piloting on my impulses, leading me to want to lash out at my haters and harassers immediately rather than waiting for that video to be finished. As a result, I made burner account after burner account after burner account after burner account. All sorts of alts on Twitter and DeviantArt created to lash out at the people who wanted to ruin my image as a reviewer because I made a negative review of something they like, or because I didn't fit their rhetoric on how random people on the internet should be treated for their opinions on dog shit. The most infamous incident being the one I had with Cartoonshi. This eventually reached Lyle Convoy who ripped into me for this and talked me into taking a 6-9 to nine month hiatus from YouTube. I did what he said, and for a while things were getting better. Until my anger reached a boiling point again because my haters and harassers continued to come at me for whatever reason. This resulted in me doing the alt accounts thing again, lashing out angrily at members of my hatedom. And at one point, I sent a couple of them a message with me saying they should be shot by gangs in pretty graphic detail. This would result in me getting ripped into by Lyo Convoy again. This time he made it clear that he was no longer helping me and he was going to cut me out of his life. And I will admit he was right to do that. I was a horrible friend to a lot of people, not just him. Being dishonest and manipulative and trying to hide things behind their backs while I kept lashing out at my haters. I was also doing an extremely horrible job of managing my anger. Saying things that I shouldn't have said and doing things I shouldn't have done. I tried making a community post and video confessing to this but it wasn't any good. The worst part of this was when I filmed myself making a vow on my father's ashes instead of keeping it to myself. This was a horrible, horrible mistake. Even if I didn't intend for it to come off that way, it was an act of emotional manipulation. I never should have made that vow public, and I never should have used my father as a prop for that video. 
It was awful and I felt really guilty over it. This led me to deciding that the best thing to do was to delete my channel, to sever myself from YouTube and actually tend to other factors in my life. Work, exercise, staying in touch with family, and it was a pretty good several months. Almost a year actually. Things have indeed gotten better in my personal life from my relationships with family to my physique to my place at work. Even after losing both my parents to illness, we still stuck together and supported each other. And I am thankful to have those things in my life. But somewhere along the way, I have to confess that I felt something missing. This hole that couldn't seem to be filled no matter what I did. It turned out that this hole was my passion for media criticism. It wasn't something I did for money or the hope that I would get hundreds of thousands of views. It was something that I did because I simply had fun doing it. Unlike 90% of people in the community who only think that all opinions are valid and need to be respected regardless of how wrong they are, I actually give a shit about movies, television, animation, and video games as expressive art forms. Critiquing them, analyzing them, breaking them down to evaluate their thematic value, figuring out what makes something good and what makes something bad, it was something that felt productive and helped me to appreciate the media I consumed a lot more. I wanted to try and get back into that passion analyzing individual elements of these works of fiction while building an audience. It was something that I was simply passionate about, and it gives me something to do with my time other than just cleaning the house all day. I wanted to take another shot at it, to start over with a new YouTube channel and get back into media criticism. Of course, I knew this wasn't going to be easy. Coming back to YouTube wasn't going to be a walk in the park because of the actual... Need to highlight that specific word because remember 95% of the backlash I get is from negative IQ Twitter roaches who got histrionic because I didn't validate their feelings on something. The actual bad things I did in 2022 and 2023. That's when I was approached by Just a Robot, who at the time was a YouTuber who was respected and liked well enough in spite of his flaws. He provided me with an avenue for getting back into media criticism without the need to make a new YouTube channel. He offered to re-upload some of my old content on his YouTube channel and even host some new and original content that I created, such as the reactions to the new Snow White trailer, and I thought it was a pretty good idea. I would get to return to my passion for reviewing works of fiction and any money made off of it would go to someone who honestly needs it more than I do. It went pretty well with my new Snow White video and look back on the cuties incident garnering a huge amount of reception and positive feedback, showing that in spite of my anger problems and past drama that there are still people out there who are simply interested in my reviews. It really meant a lot to me that after I acted like a jackass I was still being given a chance to pursue my passion for media analysis and reviewing art. I don't think I have the proper words to express that feeling you get when you're given a shot that you probably don't deserve in spite of all the odds that were stacked against you. I was fully content with not making another YouTube channel and simply co-working with Jar, helping his channel stay active while he was occupied with personal matters in his life. And then he decided to engage in pedophile apologia in his attempt to defend Cinebear's actions with a 14-year-old. Every single possible bad decision that you can make was made and I could not bring myself to support him anymore due to my moral values conflicting with something this obviously messed up. Initially, I did want to genuinely support him because he was a good friend to me, and he's also done things for another person I care about, and I appreciate the things he did to make sure they weren't hurting themselves. But the things he did to defend Cinnabar and the way he responded to the backlash was not something to ignore or overlook. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't block him immediately. Maybe it's because there was a part of me that felt sorry for him. Or I felt like I owed him for helping that person I care about and making sure they didn't hurt themselves. And I thought that maybe he'd be willing to learn from this. Obviously, I wasn't going to support him as a YouTuber anymore, but maybe we could have still had some casual talks if he comes to realize the severity of what he did with the Cinnabear thing. But if this is how he's going to react to people being upset with him for engaging in pedophile apologia, I have no reason to believe how sincere he is in any attempt to apologize for his screw-up. That's when I knew that my only remaining option was to make a new YouTube channel with a new name. I began with uploading my review of the Silent Hill 2 remake on Halloween Day, and from there I made two more videos about the PS5 Pro and my re-edited video on the Cuties incident, discluding my support for Jar. And now we're all caught up. So what happens next? Well, I'm still gonna be making content for anyone who comes across this channel. I already have a lot of ideas for things I wanna do. A ranking of the Disney live-action remakes, a video about Shadow the Hedgehog before the third movie comes out, a video about the top 10 worst pieces of media this year, my own interpretation of a top 10 list of worst animated sequels, and of course, my big review of the single worst movie to come out in the 2010s, The Rise of Skywalker. It's gonna be a slow burn by nature given I'm starting over on a channel that barely anyone knows about, but I did talk it over with some friends whose identities I will keep secret for the sake of their privacy and so they don't get bum-rushed by anyone in my hate dumb no doubt watching this. And yeah. You heard right, I still have friends, because they understand that in spite of my anger or past drama or issues regarding my hate dumb, that I'm not some sort of nefarious evil that needs to be stopped. 
They said they were okay with me starting over on YouTube as long as I didn't repeat any of the Twitter and DeviantArt alt account stuff that I did last year. And I do wish to make a genuine effort to keep my word on that. I owe it to them. And I also owe it to a lot of people. People who cared about my well-being and whose trust I betrayed. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The actual bad stuff that I did in 2022 and 2023 was indeed horrible. And I understand people not trusting me because of the severity of my actions from those two years. It was a moral of me to keep making alt after alt behind people's backs and being dishonest with people who were supposed to be my friends. And I also spent a lot of that time saying things I shouldn't have said and doing things I shouldn't have done. I'm not trying to make this into an apology video because I know from experience that apology videos never work. But I do think that it's important to at least let anyone watching this know that I do hold remorse for those actions I took. I am sorry about it. And even if people don't forgive me, I should at least confess to those wrongdoings. There's also another thing I want to do, even though it may cause some people to raise their eyebrows. I was hoping to look for a way to get in contact with Rosa Ray Ramsey so I can give her a direct apology for my involvement in that four-hour Senate call. It is true that what she did was horrible, refusing to take proper action against a child predator in favor of getting in slap fights with people on Twitter. But that four-hour Senate call was absolutely dreaded. I really should have realized sooner how wrong it was to allow it to happen. It was just a sick excuse for the Senate to receive repulsive pleasure from the suffering of a vulnerable individual. It had nothing to do with addressing the actual problem with Rosa's actions. It's something that I should do because I have to at least own up to my involvement in that situation. Especially as I now feel very embarrassed for having ever been involved in that horrible server. Considering how all those people ended up turning out to be, um... Some pretty evil pieces of shit? Now here's one thing I'm sure a lot of people familiar with who I am are gonna be asking. Am I still working on that hate them video or will it ever be done in the future? Well, no, but the full answer to that is a little bit more complicated. As I said in a pinned comment, what I really want to focus on now is getting back into my passion for reviewing works of fiction. Movies, TV shows, animation, and video games as expressive art forms. I don't want to stray away from that so soon after starting this channel, so you will be seeing more reviews of stuff than anything else for a long time. Also, I'm not going to make this huge hate documentary thing that's going to be like several hours long. Making a video that long for these people would be extremely ludicrous and it would also take away from the time I should be spending working on reviews. I do still plan on talking about these people and bringing their vile actions to light at some point, as they should be talked about, but it's gonna be different from what a lot of people would assume was gonna be some sort of feature-length documentary. It's something for another time. As for right now, I really just want to focus on getting back into reviewing things. For those of you discovering this channel and want to stick around because you genuinely care about my reviews, thank you. Even if it's not a whole lot of people, I truly appreciate those who support my work and my contribution to media criticism. I'm gonna do my best to remain productive and not take a lot of time to make content. I just need time to get back into a consistent schedule. I hope you find what you're looking for in my content, and I look forward to providing you with more critiques and analysis in the coming years. But before I go, there is one other thing I should address as it's inevitably going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. There's gonna be a lot of people who will inevitably discover this channel who will demand I get off the internet for my past actions, as if I'm more of a threat to their day-to-day -day lives than the stuff Trump is promising to do when he gets back in the White House. So let me refer those people to that pinned comment I alluded to earlier. If you're only here to leave a dislike or a comment berating me for whatever drama I was involved in before I deleted my original channel, kindly fuck off. I'm not a child predator, I haven't tried to molest anybody, I haven't engaged in any sort of pedophile apologia or any grooming, I didn't steal money from anyone, I'm not racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic in any way, I didn't threaten to go to someone's house to kill them, I didn't have any sort of sexual or vulgar conversations with any kids, I have not sexually assaulted, abused, or harassed anyone, I didn't dox anyone's private information, I didn't harbor any sexual deviance in a Discord server for months on end, I didn't withhold information on any predators, I I didn't spread any anti-mask or anti-vaccine propaganda. I never tried to orbit someone underage and wait until they were 18 to try and hook up with them. I didn't slut shame any grooming victims. I didn't write any fan fictions glorifying adults doing the deed with kids. Whatever I got myself into, at its absolute worst, it was simply petty bullshit caused by anger problems mixed with shitty impulse control. It is a fucking school walk compared to what's been done by millions of other YouTubers, and I'm getting pretty sick and tired of everyone blowing it out of proportion as if I did something 
deeply sinister and evil. Right now I simply want to get back into my passion for reviewing works of art and their thematic value while building an audience. I'm not making videos about anything else at the moment, so you have no reason to be here except to demonize me as you've already wrapped up so much ego in viciously attacking me or spreading hatred for me. You can bring up past controversies as much as you want, but I've been around long enough to know exactly what this is. Don't try to make this about the actually bad stuff I got myself into in 2022 and 2023. Things that have already been dealt with and answered for. This is another case of you freaks trying to terrorize me off the internet because you were offended by something I said about Disney's Star Wars, The Last of Us Part 2, Steven Universe, Nostalgia Critic, Velma, the Disney live-action remakes, Modern Simpsons, MLPG5, Discord's character assassination at the end of MLPG4, Space Jam 2, Netflix's stance on endorsing CP, or the tone in which I said it. It's been that way for almost 10 years, so I have no reason to believe it's any different now. Also, don't try to make any jokes about how I need to get a real job or a life or touch grass, because I have all three of those covered. I have an in-real-life job where I work outdoors for 25 to 30 hours a week. And unlike you fat losers who gain weight while using Twitter or Discord or Blue Sky as a substitute for actual human contact all day, I actually have a life outside of the internet. I've been cleaning the house, tending to the dogs, running errands, paying bills, helping family, and living independently now that both my parents are gone. So yeah, I have a life, a job, and I touch plenty of grass. Do you? Oh, and one more thing. If you're still affiliating with Lyle Convoy or any of the old Senate after everything they were exposed for since the start of the year, I have no reason to listen to you. That shit was a hundred times worse than anything I did with those alts. I'm sure you guys were doing all sorts of victory laps at the news of me deleting my old channel, throwing celebrations and acting as if you actually accomplished something. Well, let me tell you something. You didn't accomplish jack shit. I'm still here. I'm still gonna be reviewing stuff no matter how uncomfortable or attacked you feel about my takes. And acting like you're morally superior to me is absolutely laughable when I have plenty of proof that you guys have never been any better. Proof that I am more than happy to show people when the time is right. As horrible as Lyle Convoy turned out to be, I will admit that he was right about one thing. He was the only one who actually did anything about my rotten behavior regarding those alt accounts. It wasn't you idiots, with your autistic Twitter slash DeviantArt meltdowns, or your infantile stop being mean to people with different opinions YouTube rants. If you can't handle being told the truth, that's not my fault, that's your problem. Get fucked, you evil consumerist shit stains.